When we tell people that we are available 24 seven, call me late in the midnight hour, what we are doing is you're essentially giving them permission to disrespect your time. <laughs> you know, you're giving them permission to be pissed off when they text you at 11 o'clock and you legitly were asleep and you answer back the next day because you have set up the expectation that there are no limits, there are no boundaries in which your communication starts and stops. Hey friends, I'm Rosemary Lewis, your homegirl, and I'm so excited that you are here. I do not care what it looks like on Instagram or HGTV. This whole being a realtor thing is not for the faint at heart. In 2017, I quit my job as a teacher to follow my real estate dreams and quickly found myself overwhelmed and struggling. Fast forward to today, not only have I been recognized as one of the leaders in our industry, I have actually grown a business that I absolutely love. I don't care if you're a brand new agent trying to figure out how to get started or a veteran feeling overwhelmed and just stuck. I was just like you and I totally get it. Many times I wish there was someone that I could just talk to about all the challenges I was facing. And that is why I created this space just for you. Like best friends do, I'm giving you all the tea related to navigating and thriving in these real estate streets. If I can do it, guess what? That's proof that you can too. Everything's better with friends, so let's succeed together. Welcome to the Real Estate Bestie Podcast. Well, hello there, besties. Welcome to episode number 122, where we are going to talk all about setting healthy boundaries in your business. And you know what? We might talk about, we might touch on setting some boundaries in your personal life as well. This episode, friends, comes because I <laughs> I'm a podcaster myself. And when I say I'm a podcaster, I mean, obviously, you know that I host a podcast, but I actually have some different podcasts that I listen to, okay? And I have a few favorites that I, I roll with, women in business that I like. Maybe I'll do a whole nother episode. Let me know if you want to know like what I actually listen to in addition to The Real Estate Bestie because I love this podcast too. But I was listening to this episode and it reminded me of another episode that I listened to from a different person. And they both talked through boundaries. And I was like, hmm, I think this would be a great topic to talk to the besties about, especially as we are still in this, you know, I feel like all January, all long, you can talk through kind of like this new year, new me, like things that you want to implement. But quite honestly, whenever you are catching this episode, it is never not a great time to implement some boundaries and to really think through what is going to work for you. So before I hop all the way into it, let me tell you, first, I want to acknowledge one thing about us, okay? And I'm talking about me and I'm talking about you because I know that most of the real estate besties that listen are women, which brings me to a point that I've been meaning to talk to y'all about. Because I know there's a lot of guys that also, y'all, they also be listening to Real Estate Bestie because, you know, what we share here is definitely transferable, right? Boys can listen, girls can listen. But here's my question. And this is what I want you to like slide in my DMs and let me know, particularly if you are a male bestie. Do you want us to call you our boy besties? Because like I ran into one of my homies, my real estate besties at the Beyonce concert. Actually, my husband did. And he was like, I'm a boy bestie. Or do y'all want to be called the real estate homies? Hmm. I don't know. Something to think about. Like, do y'all want to be besties? Do y'all want to be homies? And then ladies, chime in. Should we call them our besties? Should we call them our homies? Should we call them boy besties? I don't know. But anywho, for most of us that are women... Setting boundaries is difficult because if you are setting boundaries in some form or fashion, you are saying no to something. And for a lot of us that are people pleasers, that are, you know, we want to keep everybody happy and you want to keep, I, I truly remember times in my business where like I was afraid to say no to certain things because I was trying to get in production I was trying to get this business going so even if it was outside of the realm of where I really 
felt like I would be a good fit or just, you know, my timing or however it looked like, I was afraid to say no, right? I was afraid to create those boundaries. But here is the reality, friends, is that whether we're talking business, whether we are talking personal, you think parenting, like I really think that in any areas of our life, we can figure out like why it is important to have boundaries so that we don't end up with a really big mess, right? If you are driving right now, there is a reason why there are lines on the road, <laughs> okay? Or the last time you were in a car, like, thank the Lord, thank the good Lord. You have been on a two-lane road and, and that, that line ain't, ain't is not there. You don't know which way to go. Then you look up, Lord, somebody in your lane. Like there is a reason why we have boundaries. And I don't want us to be afraid because the reality, I'm thinking of that Maya Angelou quote, right? That you teach people how to treat you. And by establishing boundaries, sometimes I have learned that it's not necessarily what you say, but how you say it and how you establish those boundaries or let's sub that work out for expectations, how you establish those expectations that's going to make all the difference in the world. So let's talk about it. Okay. So first things first, and this is a part that I think that sets us up for failure when it comes to the lack of establishing boundaries and the lack of establishing expectations is that when you are first engaging, when you are meeting somebody and you, you know, we have done all of, we've gone through our conversation and we are now converting them from being just a person that you've met, a lead, a customer, and we are converting them to being a client the very next step, okay, before you show a house, before you show up to with the photographer for listing pictures, before you go to meet them at the new bill place, we have to set up consultations with our prospective client, okay? But especially, especially well, I, I was about to say, especially buyers, because I know a lot of y'all be skipping buyer consultations, right? You're so ex excited to get that pre-approval in your hand and you just go out shopping. But the reality is that a lot of times people or agents, besties show up at listing appointments and we don't understand, like we're there so busily to, to try and secure the business that we forget this is also a great time where we get to consult and, and share with the potential seller or buyer exactly how we work and we get to establish expectations to see if we're going to be a good fit. So the very first boundary that I want you to set is that you will not skip the consultation piece, okay? I don't care if I've had someone who has purchased 10 million houses, right? They could be the ultra investor. If this is the first time we have worked together, now the depth of the consultation, it may not be as full blown as if I'm working with the first time home buyer, but I at least want to spend a few minutes just really sharing because I also want to hear their expectations, right? Especially someone who's had experiences with other real estate professionals before. I want to see what is the expectation that they're bringing to the situation and now we can unpack and we can talk through some things before they even become issues. So very, very, very first thing, friends, as you are setting healthy boundaries in your business is do not be afraid for that last A and L and Papa and LP Mama. And that is to go for the appointment. But in that appointment, you know, to handle it like a consultation where you not only figure out the client's needs, but you also use that as an opportunity to share how you work. Now, what am I talking about? Let's let's talk through some boundaries, okay? This is what a trap that I fell in, a trap that I see of y'all, a lot of y'all falling in, and then we hit burnout and we wonder why. If you have ever heard yourself tell somebody that you are available 24 seven, you can always reach me. You can all call me anytime. I'm not one of those realtors that take a day off call. I just want to say, okay, we're going to do better. I'm, I'm not, I was going to say shame on you, but there is no shame for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay. So I'm not going to shame you or me because I've said it, but what I am going to say is let's do better. Because when we tell people that we are available 24-7, call me late in the midnight hour, what we are doing 
is you're essentially giving them permission to disrespect your time. <laughs> you know, you're giving them permission to be pissed off when they text you at 11 o'clock and you legitly were asleep and you answer back the next day because you have set up the expectation that there are no limits. There are no boundaries in which your communication starts and stops, right? And I know you probably said to yourself, well, Rosemary, you know, that's one of the pieces of feedback because that's something we hear too, that realtors don't be answering their phones. They don't be communicating with clients. So I'm not telling you not to communicate, but I am telling you to set some boundaries, right? And in that consultation piece, just really share. Now, you don't have to go into a full dissertation about your whole night routine and let them know how you taking care of you because of your answer. Like, they don't need to know all that. But li- literally, when I'm in a consultation, I, I say something to my clients like, hey, here's the deal. I'm pretty much always accessible by phone, right? So if you ever have an issue, feel free to call me or text me. But let me warn you, I do go to sleep pretty early. So if there's ever a scenario where, you know, I'm asleep and I don't see your call, and then I'll even throw out a time, like I'm asleep normally by nine o'clock. That's like their their cue. Don't call me after that. Hey, normally I'm asleep by nine, but, but if you, you know, if it's an emergency and you definitely need to reach me, send the message and I will respond back to you first thing in the morning. Okay. So what I'm doing right there is I'm letting them know, Hey, I have flexibility, but I also have life, right? I also don't eat, sleep, breathe, real estate. And I have a life and I let them know what's going on. Right. And then here's something else. Like, let's just say I'm vacationing or I am not going to be accessible or I, you know, it's my money making hours and I'm not, you know, a client texts me and I really need to finish my phone calls. I might have an auto responder that just says, hey, I'm in a meeting. I'll call you as soon as I wrap up. I'm not going to give them a time. I'm not going to give them, you know, I'm, I'm just going to let them know, hey, I'm going to call you as soon as I'm, I see you. I acknowledge their message and I'm going to follow up. But this whole I'm available 24 seven. And then when you're at your kid's ball game and you can't enjoy it because, you know, Kendra has video messaged you 15 times because you told her that you are never off. That's what that's from. OK, so it's OK to start having some boundaries around your time and letting, you know, and, and however you tell them, you know, like, I don't think that I would be the type of person that's like nine to five. That's only when I work. No. Hey, I have flexibility. But but, you know, if for whatever reason, like I, I will always respond back to you, you let them know that. But also put in those boundaries, right? Like let them know exactly the fact that you are early riser or you whatever that looks like. Don't be afraid to set that up. Okay, here's another boundary. I'm going to tee it up delicately because I do think that when you are at a, before you get to a certain level, right, when you are still building your pipeline, you probably need to show a little bit more flexibility in area and things like that then it would look like, like there are places that I would go to serve a buyer in year one that just does not make sense for me in the year that I'm in now, right? So with that, I want to say locational boundaries, you know, figure that out ahead of time. And this is why I tell y'all to have some real life real estate besties, because if you got somebody, like if if someone is reaching out to me, right? And they want, this is just me. And because I live in a metropolitan place, maybe it would be different if I lived in a rural area. But if they are wanting me to represent them on something that is three hours away, two hours away, I don't know anything about that. Like I can serve them, but is it really the best thing for them and for me? Then I'm probably going to set that boundary, right? And say, hey, you know what? I would love to be your real estate bestie and to help you along this process. However, the area that you're looking at is just a little bit outside of my service area. And why technically, yes, I could represent you. I want to serve you at the highest level, the same way I would want someone to serve me. And this is why, and then you find somebody you can trust to refer them out to. You know what I mean? Because what happens is, is that we will take, these clients that are so far away, right? I had somebody once who was offering on one of my listings, right? She was the buyer's agent and her buyer was out of town. 
And when I tell you that she honestly lived like three hours away from the listing and every time like it was one like she came to show the property, then she came back this way to do the inspections and stuff. Then there was some stuff on the inspection where the client wanted her to meet a service person out there. You know, all these different things she kept coming back and forth from. And, you know, in, and then, y'all, they actually ended up can't like not even following going through because this particular client, their lender didn't do their due diligence in terms of the rate. So she was back and forth on this three hour drive at least four times that I can recall for a deal that didn't even work, right? Where it would have been such a better use of her time to refer it out to somebody who was closer that could keep her updated, that she could still, you know, they could could have worked together to support the client because she didn't have this location boundary. I know that it just probably drug her to the ground. And this is why we end up being burnt out, right? You wonder why am I so burnt out? Why am I so overwhelmed? Because we don't have any boundaries on that, okay? We don't have any boundaries. Okay, here's another boundary I want you to think through. The type of clients that you serve, and let me let me back it up and, and give you an example, like what, pretty much like what you specialize in. I am a residential real estate broker, okay? And some of you may or may not agree with this, but this is this is my personal boundary, right? I am not interested, nor do I enjoy commercial deals, okay? I have a lot of clients that are business owners and a lot of clients that are looking for leases, they're looking for office space, they're looking for, you know, spaces that they could build. And while, yes, according to my license, I could help them, that's not the type of real estate that I'm interested in in this juncture, okay? And sometimes, and, and you know how I'm not, I know I'm not interested because I tried it. I tried to do it once and it just wasn't for me. It doesn't give me the same joy and excitement that residential real estate, like helping that person buy or sell. It's just something about like, I know that I know that I know my stuff. And then just when it comes to these leases, that's just outside of my wheelhouse. So I had to create a boundary for myself because here's the deal, y'all. Sometimes when we are looking for commission, I do think that you should try different things to see what might make sense for you. Because even though something is hard, doesn't mean that it's not what you're supposed to be doing, right? I knew without a shadow of a doubt, like commercial is not really for me. Working with investors is not quite for me. But like when I get to work in my residential market, I have, you know, identified who my ideal client in terms of kind of where they are in their process of home ownership, then yes, that lights me up every time. So then I have to set boundaries for myself on, again, who I'm going to be the best fit to serve because my heart ain't in it. Right. And and I am an entrepreneur. So for somebody who really is looking to build a business, somebody who's looking, you know, to make sure that, you know, this person understands leases and they understand all of the intricacies of that. I have to set a boundary to say, OK, if I have somebody who is looking for this, what is my solution going to be for them? Because this is not, you know, I'm not the solution. So you got to you have to set some stuff up and get some stuff in place to make sure that you are not putting yourself in a position where you're serving in a capacity that's not really for you. Now, here's the next one. And this kind of goes back to the time thing. Set boundaries around when are you pouring back into yourself so that you can serve others. I believe that everybody should have some day off. And and, and I get it. Like real estate work, I'm the type of person, like even doing real estate bestie, like when I am, you know, coaching the besties, when I'm recording the podcast, I love it so much that it does not always feel like work, but don't get it twisted. It is work. So there needs to be time in your schedule. There needs to be time in your day where you give yourself to decompress. And we need to set boundaries around that, right? So you know, like if you know that you are going to be taking appointments all weekend long because you know you're doing open houses and that's when you're showing okay then maybe you set a boundary where no matter what you don't take appointments on 
Monday evenings. That was actually my boundary. When I first got into real estate, I realized that, you know, weekends were not optional for me. I needed to be hitting the beat on the weekends. So as a result, you know, I set a boundary that I I pretty much stick to even to this day that Monday evenings, I don't take appointments. That's pretty much reserved for me to just kind of hang out with my family. And that's kind of my prep for the day week with us. It looks a little different. I don't work as many weekends as I used to, but that's definitely a boundary that helped me create rhythms within my household and it helps to avoid way burnout. So what does that look like for you? And I'm especially talking to, well, honestly, I'm talking to everybody, but like if you have something else going on in addition to real estate, you know, you have your dual career, you have a part-time job, like what does pouring into yourself look like? And we have to create that. Like, do you have a time where, you know what, every morning I'm not going to check my phone into this time. I'm going to be in bed at this time. You know, I'm going to make sure that I give myself this day or this half a day off so that I am refueling myself because here's the deal. If we don't, and if we are allowing our clients, our families, our friends, everybody to suck up all of our time and we're not pouring into ourselves, well, shocker, you're not going to have much to pour from, right? If you're pouring into everybody else, you are not going to have much to pour from. And that kind of segues way into kind of some personal boundaries, right? And, I, and like full disclosure, I'm going to tell you about today because today i I pretty much violated one of my personal boundaries, but I'm going to get it back on track this evening. So I have a personal boundary where, you know, you all know I don't sleep in the same room with my phone. Um, Go back to episode number eight. I'm always going to shout out that episode. Or even if you just want to see the day in the life of real estate agent, that's a free download that we have, rosemarylewis.com forward slash day. On there, I list like when my phone goes in the other room. But at the end of every night, I put my phone in another room. And honestly, another a boundary that I'm implementing this year is that when my husband comes home, I'm putting my phone in another room. I don't want it on me because I don't want to be looking at my phone the whole time. That should be family time, but I digress. And so my boundary is put my phone in the other room. And then in the morning, I have quiet time, sit with Jesus, Generally, I work out and then I grab my phone. But y'all, I agreed to do this interview this morning at 7 a.m. And, you know, it was cold last night. I, I knew that I was going to sleep later. Like I put it on my schedule to sleep later, but I didn't get up. Like this is one of those days. Shocker. Even Rosemary sleeps in sometimes. I didn't get up. So the boundary that I violated is that because this interview, it was on Facebook, so I got my phone, that I I got on the Facebook and then I was just kind of thrust into work mode after that before having my quiet time with the Lord. So you know who feels like the person who I had the interview with, they don't feel weird right now. It's hours later. It's me. It's me who feels off And literally when I finish this podcast, I'm going to go and I'm going to sit and have my quiet time. And tomorrow I'm going to be right back on it and honoring that boundary. So what are your personal things? Like what are some personal things in your life that you need to set so that you can function better, right? And it could be as small as, you know what, I am going to, you know, wait 20 minutes and drink a full glass of water before I grab my phone. That could be a boundary. Or it could be, you know, something like, you know, we ha- we all have them, right? Like think about your personal, what, what are some personal things that you want to put in effect And you are even going to hold yourself accountable to that, whether that's not having your phone in your hand when your kids are home, whether that's drinking water before you drink soda, you know, whether that is, you know, making sure that, okay, if you are going to surf the internet, if you are going to scroll, you put a time on your phone, you're going to scroll for 10 minutes. And after that, that's your scrolling for the day. Like really think through what are some personal boundaries that I need to put because the reality, my boy TK, he's coming to the real estate bestie retreat. Love him and all his his knowledge. But he says when it when you get better, it gets better, right? So when we start to create, you know, some some boundaries within ourselves, and when we really kind of focus on how can we improve, then whatever that thing that you want to improve, it generally does improve. So 
just thought that I would put that out there. You know, we're talking about some professional boundaries, but I know that for all of us, myself included, you know, it's this is a great time to just really look and see, okay, what are some personal boundaries? Oh, and I'm gonna tell you a personal boundary that I have right now, y'all, that's working. So last year, <sighs> I, I mean, can I just blame it on last year? I just, you know, between Apple Wallet and Instagram influencers and all of these ads and meta knowing exactly what I'm trying to do before you know it, like y'all seen that meme, like I got to stop spending money. Like I'm a drug dealer. I know I make money, but it is getting like, it was getting out of control. So I set this boundary for myself at the beginning of the year. And up until the recording of this podcast, I have honored it. And that boundary is that if it costs more than $25, then I have to wait 25 hours to purchase it. So gone are the days that I see that little cute girl posting them Target outfits. Like, why does Target look like her? Look like that on her? Um, gone are the days where I look at these Lululemon dupes where, you know, I'm on Instagram commenting link. And before I know it, like I'm playing guess who with the Amazon boxes because I have no idea what I ordered. I literally like, and I'm holding, I'm, I'm telling y'all, look, and that's something else. Sometimes when you have boundaries, you got to tell people so they can hold you accountable. But I told my good friends and I have one friend in particular, like if I see a link and I like something, I will send her the link and then I'll just like type 25, right? And I put it there because it kind of timestamps it. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that Ever since I started this boundary at the beginning of the year, there was one pair of shoes that I did. I went back to the store to go get, but the line was so long when I went back, I was like, eh, I'll see if I want them later. And to date, I think I still want them, but I still haven't ordered them yet because that boundary is just stopping and making me think. It's making me process, right? So that is one for me that has truly helped professional honestly it's helped personally and professionally because I'm not just spending money like frivolously but it definitely like I see how having that boundary in place actually I'll have more money in my bottom line later because I'm not spending so frivolously so that's just a little example if you you look if you like me and you out here you know swiping Amazon like you El Chapo maybe you want to try that one too but definitely, definitely, definitely thinking through what boundaries you can have in your both your business and your personal life is going to be a game changer. I trust you. And really, it's all about setting expectations, setting expectations with the people you work with and setting expectations with yourself and keeping those promises. OK. All right. If this episode, friends, speaking of boundaries, I'm going to set a boundary. I'm not coming back until y'all start writing reviews. No, I'm playing. I, no, you know what? Maybe I need to hold fast to that. Friends, let me tell you something about the podcast world. The way this thing goes is that the more you download, the more you write reviews, then what happens is like all the little people behind the phone in the podcast world, they let all the other real estate besties who haven't found us yet, they say, oh my goodness, you need to find Rosemary and the besties. They're over there having a really good time and learning together. So don't make me beg. I'm not too proud to beg. If you could leave a five-star review, like literally it would take you like, I would say probably 42 seconds at the most. Leave a quick review, okay? And then why don't you hit that share button? Share it with a friend. If you cannot think of a real life real estate bestie, snap a picture, post us on social media, tag me. I will always repost you because again, we want to get our message out. We want to be linking arms with other real estate besties all over the world. And listen, I cannot do it by myself. It takes a village to build this community and you're a part of the village. So I'm counting on you. So thank you again for listening listening to this podcast, share, 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 leave a review, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye besties. If you enjoyed this episode and you have a real life bestie that you think it would resonate with, y'all do me a favor, go ahead and hit that share button because you know what? We are better together. Make sure you share the podcast and I appreciate your reviews. I appreciate you giving me five stars more than you know. I'll talk to you next week.